Hey everybody, today in our hubs we are rounding off the second chapter of Philippians, the letter of joy. I hope you've been enjoying this study through the book. I know it's been so meaningful for our church to gather around this topic. And you know, right now people from multiple countries and a bunch of different cities and time zones are meeting together, gathering together, and reminding ourselves to choose joy, to resolve to be in joy. What a meaningful and purposeful thing. The day's going to come soon when some of our hubs will start gathering in person, but we'll continue to have hubs just like this one so that people who are a little bit further away or continue to be in the vulnerable sector can stay connected, stay involved, and continue to grow together. Now today, uh, we're going to take a little less time on the study portion because I want our hubs to be full of conversation. The reason for that is going to be clear in a moment. Now, for those of you who love to talk, you're saying, Pastor Justin, it's self-explanatory. The reason for talking is in and of itself that talking is the greatest thing. For some of you, you don't feel that way. You like to just listen in. Maybe you turn your camera off and you're observing from afar on Zoom. But, but for you today, you're saying, I don't think anything you could say to, would, would convince me that sharing more is a good thing. Well, why don't we let the Bible do some talking and then we'll go from there. Let's pray and then we'll, we'll jump into this. Jesus, thank you so much for every person who's gathered in a hub. I ask that you would use your word today to spark something in us and to spur us on forward. I pray that you continue to join our hearts together and that we would collectively choose joy wherever we're gathered from tonight. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, uh, starting at verse uh, 16. 16, the Apostle Paul has just said, that our lives could shine like the brightness of the stars. That if we live according to God's plan for our lives, He's got a will for us and the energy. So He gives us the plan and the means to accomplish that plan that our lives might shine in a dark generation. Then He goes on to say this, But even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on a sacrifice and service coming from faith, I'm glad and I rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. See, the Apostle Paul is inviting those who are reading to share emotions with one another. He's saying, even if I'm going through a terribly difficult thing, I want to rejoice with you. And in the same way, no matter what you might be walking through right now, I want to invite you to rejoice with me. You know, the, the themes thus far in, in, a, uh, in Philippians seem to have been these thoughts of humility and unity that bind us together so we can be at joy together. And then in the midst of servitude and being enslaved and imprisoned and all the difficulty he was walking through, he's still asking us, let's resolve to be more Christ-like. Let's have an attitude like Jesus. And it takes humility and it takes unity. And here he's reminding us that to truly have unity, to really live in humility, we need to be transparent with the things we're feeling. We need to actually not only be transparent, but also be compassionate with our emotions and say, if you're feeling pain right now, I'm going to meet you in that pain and empathize. If you're rejoicing right now, I'm going to meet you in that joy and celebrate. It's what Jesus said, that we ought to rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn. This, this theme is all throughout Scripture. And so here Paul is reminding them, and now as I read the rest of this portion, I want you to listen to how many emotionally charged words there are. Because you'll see in Paul, there's this transparency. Even as their leader, even as the one who's inspiring them, he's sharing the things his heart is feeling, not just the conclusions that his mind has come to. Listen for the emotive words. He says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I also may be cheered when you receive news about me. I have no one else like him who shows genuine concern for your welfare, for everyone looks out for their own interests, not for the interests of Jesus. But you know that Timothy has proved himself, because as a son to his father, he has served with me in the work of the gospel. I hope, therefore, to send him as soon as I can, uh, so you can see how things are going with me. And I'm confident in the Lord that I myself will come soon. But I think it's necessary to send back to you Epaphroditus, my brother, co-worker and fellow soldier, who's also your messenger, whom you sent to take care of my needs. For he longs for all of you, and he's distressed because, he heard, uh, because you heard he was ill. Indeed, he was ill. He almost died. But God had mercy on him, and not on him only, but also on me, to spare me sorrow 
upon sorrow. Therefore, I am all the more eager to send him so that uh, uh, to send him so that when you see him again, you may be glad and that I may have less anxiety. So then welcome him in the Lord with great joy and honor people like him because he almost died for the work of Christ. He risked his life and he uh, to make up for the help that you yourselves could not give me. Not the best reading I've ever done. It's kind of hard when the light's pointing right in my eye, but I hope you caught those words, those emotional words. He's talking about anxiety and sorrow and longing and confidence and joy and eagerness. He's sharing really what he's feeling. You know, sometimes I think we feel lonely in community because we're not willing to really share the true part of ourselves. We share what we think people might want to hear. We share, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. And we think that people want to hear the words fine instead of the true things we're feeling. Here Paul is saying, in order for us to be in humility and to walk in unity, we need to be honest. He goes, my life is being poured out. Like, like I'm spending everything I have and giving the very best of what I have. But I'm so excited because I see the result in your life. And so can you join me in now showing that same type of excitement and joy? And then he talks about all the, the feelings he's feeling. Tonight I want to ask you as you, you share in your hub, be honest with your emotions. Share some real feelings. It, it's going to be amazing for you to experience what it's like when you rejoice and others rejoice with you. And when you mourn and others mourn with you. Moreover, it's going to be amazing for you to choose joy on behalf of someone else who's rejoicing and to choose empathy on behalf of someone else that's mourning. Let's be honest with one another. Imagine if we came through this solitude season, this isolating season, this distanced social time, and, and we come out of it being no more in touch with our emotions. Wouldn't that be sad? Imagine if we come out of it only to come back into physical community and still feel distance and still feel solitude and still feel isolated because we haven't mastered the art of simply being honest with ourselves and honest with our emotions. Hey, tonight let's just take a step and be a little more real, be a little more honest. What are we really feeling? The second thing I want you to note is this, and it's going to be an exercise we try together. Paul models what it looks like to walk in humility and to foster unity. How does he do that? By showing honor. Here he goes, my life's being poured out and I'm feeling joy so you can feel joy with me. And then he just he kind of tangents. All of a sudden, you're like, he, he's been explaining what the attitude of Christ is like and what the purpose for humanity is like and what it is for us to have this great attitude. And, and then he goes, hey, you know Timothy? Man, you got no one as good as Timothy. Paul is being humble. He, he has their undivided attention and he uses the platform he has to show honor to his, his friend Timothy, to his son in the faith, the person that he's mentoring. He goes, you have nobody as sincere as Timothy. He's like, Timothy, oh, you're going to love Timothy. Trust me. Timothy, when he shows up, you, you're going to have the best time with Timothy. I just love that Paul's words are making a way for Timothy to thrive. We know a few things about Timothy. He was young. We, we know from the book of First and Second Timothy that he probably struggled with some confidence. We know that, that he was not in a comfortable place coming from Turkey to Greece, you know, to the, the, the Philippian community. And yet Paul is just setting the, the scene for him. He goes, man, when I send you Timothy, you're going to love this guy. He's wise. He's concerned. He cares. He, he's got the same kind of heart I have. I love those words of honor. And then he goes, and Epaphroditus, oh man, guys, Epaphroditus crushed it. <laughs> it's basically what he said. He, now, Epaphroditus was from Philippi. And when Paul needed help, he called out to the Philippians. He said, hey, could you send some help? They all kind of looked around and said, hey, there's nothing we can really do. And Epaphroditus volunteered. He said, well, I could go help. So he went on behalf of the Philippians to help Paul to come and kind of attend to some needs and serve. And Paul says, Epaphroditus went above and beyond. He showed up here and he didn't just show up to help out. He really involved himself in ministry and he put himself out there so much so that, that he felt ill. Man, guys, he almost died. And he goes, I'm going to send Epaphroditus back because I want you to know how good he is. He's, he's good now and I don't want you to be concerned. And I don't want to feel that same sorrow or concern. I want you to know everything's well. But then he says this, just this little, little phrase. He goes, honor people like him. Honor people like him. And Vivid Church, we need to honor people like Epaphroditus. Well, who's like Epaphroditus? You know, I, I want to venture to say that 
you're like Epaphroditus. I, I hope I'm like Epaphroditus. I, I hope that as we're serving and attending to the needs that we have every single day, that, that we begin to model and exemplify Christ's likeness. He calls him his fellow, you know, fellow servant and a fellow soldier and, and someone who had engaged in ministry. I hope whatever we're doing in our life, that we're really prioritizing the things of Jesus. And Paul says, honor people like that. So I want to commend you and ask you, can, can we use our words to honor one another tonight? Like really, let's take some time and, and share the emotion of what we're feeling, to, to empathize and to celebrate together. And then let's take some time to honor the people in our hub, to honor the people in our life, and to begin to have an environment where it's normal to share words of honor. Why? Because it, it fosters humility within us, and it actually cultivates uh, unity among us. That's the challenge today. Now, now, Philippians 3 and 4 are so packed. I have considered maybe we need to continue in this study for like months and months and months, but we're not going to. We're going to finish it by summer. And so come next week ready to roll because chapter 3 and chapter 4 are packed with, with a lot of the things that you'd quote from the book of Philippians that you didn't even know were from the book of Philippians. We're going to find them there. But for today, let's be transparent. Let's show some honor. Love you guys.